What's up guys? How's it going? It is Matt here. So this is going to be another survival video. So this one is going to be how to survive a nuclear attack. I'm not talking about a nuclear apocalypse. I'll do save that for another video, but this is for the actual initial nuclear attack. Now, a lot of people get uh, kind of confused and uh, they're not exactly sure or they don't know exactly how powerful modern day nuclear weapons are. They always think back to like the Tsar Bomba, which is a Russian bomb, which if you take a look at the blast radius and you put it on a map, it would actually literally destroy the state of Connecticut. And if you don't know how big Connecticut is, uh, go ahead and take a look at it right now. So. A bomb that size would pretty much destroy the entire state of Connecticut. But the only catch is the bombs like that can only be brought in by aircraft. Over the years, the militaries of the world have gone from bomb aircraft dropped nuclear bombs to missile fired bombs, which are a lot smaller. The modern day tactical nuclear weapons aren't as big as the Tsar Bomba that Russia dropped back, but they are closer to Nagasaki and Hiroshima and damage, but still bigger than those. So the reason we do that is because our position, our rockets have such precision in them that you could actually put these missiles on an ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile, and you can fire it from country to country if the country doesn't have a defense system and knock them out of the sky. Or you could put them on submarines and you could launch them and they're going to be a lot smaller but you still launch them from the shore so they don't travel as far it'll be quicker to hit whereas if you refire a missile from say russia to the united states middle of the united states it would take about 20 to 30 minutes to get to us from a submarine a lot quicker so and there's a lot more precision in these actually nuclear missiles so that's mainly what is would be used if there was some type of situation now with one of these tactical nuclear weapons tactical nuclear missiles, there will be a lethal dose of radiation that'll be exposed from about five miles away from the blast. So if you're within that five mile radius, if it's in the middle and you're in a five mile radius of that blast, that means you are going to get radiation poisoning and you're probably going to die. So let's think about this for a minute. So if there's a five mile radius and that's shooting in the very middle of it, so that would mean how far would you actually have to be to actually be in to survive the actual blast. So a five mile radius of lethal radiation, which give it about a two and a half mile radius away from the initial point to survive the initial blast and the initial radiation. So in reality, you are going to have to be about two and a half miles away from a nuclear blast to survive a nuclear blast. I've heard some people say a mile, which can be true if you are in a very heavily fortified building, whether it's brick or concrete or something like that. Yes, there's a possibility if the building has a good structure that you can survive it. Some buildings survive, some buildings don't. It, it, it all depends on the construction and everyone else. But say you just plain every average day person from the actual blast, say you're at your house or whatever it is, you're gonna have to be a minimum of two and a half miles away to survive the initial blast and the initial radiation, depending on the weather, okay? Because if the wind is strong, it can blow the fallout in different directions and whatnot. And if it's raining, then it's going to, they've actually said it can turn into black rain and all of the radioactive fallout materials, which is all the particles and the dust and all the crap that comes out of the explosion, will fall down and you will be exposed to radiation, to major radiation. Now, going off a tactical nuclear missile, then if you are within that three mile radius, we'll say three mile radius, you'll get burns. You will probably get first degree burns, if not second degree burns, or if not third degree burns. So basically, you have right around two and a half to three miles, you have to be away from this blast to avoid the initial devastation, the blast, and the radiation of it. And actually, the closer you get to the blast, the uh, more likely you are to be turned into dust, and that's a real thing. It's so hot, the closer you are, you will be cremated, pretty much. You'll be cremated if you're too close to the bomb. Now that we covered all of that stuff, we're gonna cover a couple basic stuff that can help you survive a nuclear attack. So let's get into that, shall we? So, step one, be prepared, which means 
know your areas. Know if you're close to any military bases or major cities. Know your general area. And those areas you can look on various maps or like FEMA and stuff like that and they'll tell you which they think will be the actual targets. Now what you can do is you can go to local officials, whether it's law enforcement or state officials or whoever it is, and try to find out if there's a place or a building that can be designated as a fallout shelter. Not necessarily a fallout shelter, but there are some buildings that can survive it, and there's some towns and cities and states that actually have specific areas that can be designated as those fallout shelters. We'll call it a shelter, but it's not an actual underground bomb shelter. Like we said, it's just a building. Now, there could be an actual fallout shelter in your neighborhood, too, or in your city or whatever, so know where all that stuff is. Pay attention. Pay attention to current events. What's going on in the world? A lot of people don't realize this. I was just watching this. What was it? Last week, Kim Jong-un, North Korea, the rocket man out there, basically made a massive threat to America last week when all of our heads were torn, turned towards Vegas. He actually came out with this threat, basically saying in his speech to his people that America has been in power for too long and North Korea is sick and tired of waiting for a strike and they are prepared to strike. Basically, he was saying it is time to act and we are ready to act and we are going to act is what he basically said. Now, a lot of people think that he's just trying to get more resources and all that other stuff and get the sanctions removed. But personally, I think the guy's crazy. And if you look at his history, yeah, he's crazy. He wants to launch nuclear weapons at people. But he basically said that our powers have had their time and it's t our time is ending and he wants to end those powers. So naturally, our military defenses are on standby. They are on alert. Mad Dog Mattis has a plan, and I trust in him, all right? I 100% trust in that man. Mad Dog Mattis has a plan. The generals have a plan. I don't know what it is. They're not going to tell us what it is because they obviously they're not like the previous people in power that would tell everything that they're going to do so everyone get prepared and leave. They're just going to do it. When so it basically we are closer to any type of nuclear war than we have been in a very, 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 very long time. Now, some people will say North Korea missiles, they're, they, they're, they're finicky. They can't reach that far. <coughs> You're right. They're right. Their cruise missiles aren't the greatest. Yet they have a, a massive submarine fleet and their submarines have nuclear launching capabilities. So they could get close and they could launch nuclear missiles pretty damn easily. All right, so this is a real threat. So know what's going on around you. Have supplies on standby. Have an area that you can go to on standby. Basement, okay? If you have a basement, get in the damn basement if something comes up. Pay attention to alerts. If there was a nuclear strike that came, there would probably be alert. If it's from a submarine, you only have minutes if you even get the alert. If it's fired from another country like a cruise missile, you'll, have, you'll, you'll know when it's coming, all right? there'll be enough alerts if you catch it, all right? But basically, if something does happen, you will have minutes to react in an order to have maybe even seconds to react. So you're going to have to get down into your basement, underground, as underground as you could possibly get, you storm shelters, whatever you have, basements. If you are in an office building or something like that, a bigger office building made out of stone or bricks because anything else probably won't do the job, then you have to get as low as you can either into the basement of that or into the very center away from any types of windows so when that strike comes you can actually survive the initial blast okay you have to be prepared you have to be ready there's a couple of things you're want, gonna want to get one thing is potassium iodide okay it comes in drops it comes in pills and stuff like that what that does it helps protect your thyroid so it actually helps not 100%, it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. It will help pr protect you from radiation poisoning if you are in the affected areas. So you should probably take that. You probably get some, you should probably have some on standby. You need canned foods for a couple days because if a strike comes, you can look at FEMA's website and everyone else, they say you need to be re remain indoors from after a blast if you survive from 24 hours or till the designated time when they say, which means you gotta know what's going on, so you probably gotta have some way of communication to the outside world, which would probably be some sort of radio with battery powered, hand cranked, whatever it is. I don't know if your phones would work then, I don't know. So you are gonna have to have communication in the outside world to know what's going on, but you're gonna have to expect sheltering in place for a day to two days, okay? 24 to 48 hours. So you're gonna want water and you're gonna want food, okay? So enough water and enough food for two days for however many people you have that you're sheltering in place, okay? 
Now that's for the people that are inside. So if you get the attack, you have to hit the basement, hit the center of a big building or whatever it is, and you have to have the supplies on standby and whatever, get there as safely as you can. Now, we're gonna to talk to the people that are exposed, that are outside, okay? The people that are outside, it's gonna be a lot harder. Now, in general, if there's a nuclear attack, you're going to want to wear as many layers of clothing as you possibly can to try to keep as much fallout off your body as you possibly can. Fallout is the particles that are radioactive that fall down and settle on everything. It's like dust, okay? Dust, minerals, rocks, all that other stuff. So you're gonna want as many layers as you possibly can to protect that. You don't want your, you don't want to be breathing it in. You don't want your skin to be exposed. So if there's a high threat situation and you know something's gonna be coming in, put on some damn layers, okay? So put on some layers, get any type of covering up a mask, whether it's a gas mask, some gas mask will work, or like a work mask, it, it's better than nothing, you know? Because if you're breathing in that dust, guys, it's radioactive dust and you will die from it, okay? So, but if you're outside, what will happen is you may have an alert or you might hear the shock of the initial impact, all right? Don't ever look at the flash. Don't ever look at the flash. For people, it's natural to see something bright. Ooh, what's that? Don't, okay? Because if you look at the flash, it's brighter than the sun. You will fry your eyes. You will be blind for the rest of your life. And within about six miles, you can be blinded for the rest of your life if you look directly at that blast. If it's at night, <laughs> even farther away, you can be blinded, all right? So if a strike comes and it's a massive strike, do not look at it. Fight the urge to look for it. Try not to look at it, cover yourself. Then what you need to do, you need to run as fast as you possibly can and get behind the thickest, heaviest barrier. Put that between you and where the blast was coming from. Hopefully, you'll be about three miles away from the blast so you can actually survive that initial blast or simply just have major burns, which will still be a pain in the butt, or first or second degree burns. But hopefully you're far enough away that simply diving cover behind the biggest, thickest thing. You know, I'm not talking like a freaking tree. I mean, something that is massive, it's a barrier, a wall, a brick fence, whatever it is. Take cover, hide behind it. Face down on the ground, hands on the back of your head, cross your feet. Don't let your body be exposed to what's actually going out there. Stay on the ground, okay? That blast comes, just because you hear a blast doesn't mean it's over. It can take up to a minute. They say 30 seconds to a minute for the actual shock to actually come over towards you. So you stay there, okay? You stay there, you hear the blast. Stay down there until a shock wave passes, okay? Once that shock wave passes, you get your ass up and get inside as quickly as you possibly can and get into a thick area, get into the basement, get wherever you can so you have walls between you and the fallout that are, that's about to start coming in your direction. Get inside. If you survive that initial blast, you're probably gonna have burns on your body, first degree, second degree burns, sometimes even third degree burns. Get inside as fast as you can. Get to your area where you made your preparations. Strip down, take every single piece of your clothing off. If you have fresh water supply, hose yourself down, rinse yourself off, bottles of water, do whatever you can. Baby wipes, wipe yourself off as much as you can. Wipe off your eyebrows, any piece, types of hair, anything. Clean yourself off. That clothing that was radioactive, put it in some sort of garbage bag, whatever it is, and get it as far away from you and anyone else as you possibly can. Get it away from you because that stuff's gonna be covered in radioactive materials. Get it away from you, change into a clean pair of clothing, keeping your, like I said, keep, making sure you, you've wiped yourself down, cleaned yourself off the best you can. Change into clean clothing. Then, then you gotta set up some sort of barrier, whatever it is, tables, whatever it is, around you just set it up around you the best you can it maybe it might not do anything it might help a little bit set that stuff up around you and then guess what time to wait it out 24 to 48 hours i hope those supplies that you put on standby are close enough to you that you'll have the ability to eat food drink clean water to listen to information that's going on around there because you have to shelter in place for 24 to 40 hours you have to all right you have to wait for that initial fallout storm to settle you just have to wait all right now after the 24 to 48 hours now there, actually there's a little catch with that guys if you are close to ground zero and you happen to survive it and you're very close to the ground zero like you're in an office building or whatever it is you might have to wait in place for up to a month, okay? Like seriously, you might have to wait in place 
that long. So I hope you guys have supplies. But if you are far enough away from it, then you'll have a better advantage. If you're in a city, you're stuck inside a building, you're gonna be in there for a long time before it's safe to get out, okay? And in the initial area is gonna be the majority of the fallout, that radioactive material, that's gonna be the majority of it. Now, guys, keep that in mind. Storms, winds can blow the fallout to like thousands of miles away, okay? Hundreds to thousands of miles away, depending on the winds, depending on the weather. So even if you're far enough away from blast, you could still be, still get fallout on you, okay? So anyway, we're going back to the, the person outside in the safe area. They've been waiting in their house 24, 48 hours. Food on hand for clean water, clean food. There's a chance you might have radiation poisoning. You'll usually know because you'll be bleeding, you'll be coughing up blood, your nose will be bleeding. The thing is, guys, while you're doing this, I'm hoping you have that potassium and iodine because you can continue doing taking that daily just to help try to keep protect your thyroid and that in general. Just by constantly trying to protect that, it can give you a little bit more time to survive in this type of situation. So after 24 hours to 48 hours are done or until you hear otherwise, if they say stay inside for four, four days and you have to stay inside for four days. After that initial time frame is that the waiting period is, then you got to get out, okay? Now, when you're going out, get as many layers of clothing as you want on. I'm talking gas masks. If you don't have a gas mask, get some sort of re some type of breather. So, cause there's still gonna be that dust all over the place. That fallout is still gonna be all over the place. It was raining, that's gonna be coming down in rainstorms and stuff like that. So that dust is gonna be all over the place. So you're gonna be breathing that dust in. So you're gonna wanna protect your lungs. You're gonna wanna to protect your organs. So if you're getting out there, get as many layers of clothing as you can. Like me, I have a Gore-Tex, which is, uh, I have a couple Gore-Texes actually. It's a, it, it, I would use the cold weather Gore-Tex. It's a cold weather, uh, well it's a thicker raincoat. It would just help keep more of the stuff off your body. I'd be going out in that and a pair of pants, double up my socks. My hands would be covered with gloves. I had to cover as much of my face as I can. Keeping in mind, guys, if you have a beard, you're going to have to shave it, all right? If you have a mask on or gas mask on, you won't have a full seal if you have a, have a beard, so you're going to have to shave it. If you want a full seal and you want to be able to breathe safely, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, so then get out of the area. Get, find the emergency officials if they're in the area. Find the emergency officials. You don't know if they're going to be there or not, depending on the situation. Hopefully, there's going to be an emergency cruise on standby if not get as far away from that blast as you can just go just go and go and go and go if you have radiation sickness you're gonna have to get medical help and you're having to get it fast now if you don't just keep on going and going and going and either way the second you get a chance to actually have fresh water and be able to do a serious wipe down and wash down with soap don't use conditioner that can actually connect the part or keep particles on your body just like soap Complete wash down with soap. The second you can do it, do it, okay? All right, just do it because you have to get that crap off your body. You just have to. Anyway, guys, that is how you can survive an initial nuclear strike for a tactical nuclear missiles. If it's something like the SAR Bomba, you're screwed. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you would, check out my t-shirt line. I'll put some pictures in the end. Actually, links will be down in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, go check me out on Patreon. That link will also be in the description. You can either help support the channel or you can just subscribe and see more videos over there. Anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends about me. And remember, guys, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other.